we're here with Ellie today and we're going to be doing a video on 10 early intervention steps for special needs babies. So let's get started. Number 10. Um, number 10 is lots of interaction. So um, babies' brains are still making connections until the age of three actually. And so you just want to make sure that you're interacting with your baby as much as possible. So this may seem like something that's obvious, but maybe it doesn't come natural to other people. So you just want to make sure you're playing with your baby often, you know, do finger games and things like that. Move them around, wiggle their bodies, um, teach them things, talk to them, you know, when you walk around outside and um, talk about what you see. Sing to them, um, read books, anything that you can think of to interact with your baby as much as possible and as often as possible um, so that you're really stimulating their brain. Also, it's important early on to start teaching rights and lefts. So when you're playing with the baby, maybe do something like, uh, Eleanor, give me five with your left hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she usually likes that game. And then we also <laughs> teach her sign language because it's harder for babies to learn to talk um, than it is for them to learn sign language. Like she's used to tapping her mouth twice for num nums. So things like that really help the baby to advance. Number nine. Number nine is exercise. So we basically consider this like our home physical therapy. Uh, so you want to move your baby's legs around a lot, clap their hands, work on sitting up, you know, do what you can to try to help them learn head control. Um, anything you can do to get their bodies moving is really good for their brain stimulation also. Um, a big thing that you can do is to get a baby development app um, that personalizes, like um, we use Baby Sparks, and there's other baby apps that you can get as well. And they'll give activities on there, like putting bells on the baby's wrists, so when they move them around, they hear them move, and that, that um, teaches them things and stimulates them. And uh, there's lots of different developmental activities um, in those apps. Um, to really help you make sure that um, you're doing the most you can for your baby physically. One thing I've found as well is when Ellie is laying on my stomach or on my chest when I'm laying back, she automatically likes to straighten her legs and so I made a game out of it. So watch your baby and look for things like that that you can make a game out of where they're using their muscles uh, because especially for special needs kids, that muscle movement is vital for them. So you're not having to move their muscles around for them. They're already doing it and you're making it into a fun game. So what we do is the stand up game. That's what I made it out to be. So she straightens her legs up and so I pick her up from her legs and I go, ah, Eleanor is standing up. And so then she'll drop her legs back down and I'll say, Ellie stand up, Ellie stand up. And then she straightens her legs back up and then I lift her up and I go, Ellie standing up. So. She loves it and she starts to smile and giggle. Um, we also use an Otteroo, which we have another video about, so go check out our Otteroo video. Uh, an Otteroo is a blow-up device that goes around Ellie's neck and she's able to do free swim play in it. So check out our video uh, for Otteroo um, Playtime uh, that has Ellie in it. Number eight is breastfeed. All of Ellie's professionals have emphasized how important it is that we continue to give her breast milk as opposed to formula, if you can at all possibly do that. Um, our, her endocrinologist, her neurosurgeon, her neurologist, her pediatrician, all of these professionals that we see for um, Ellie's special needs have all emphasized to us um, that they think that that has a lot to do with how good she's doing and that we need to continue to give her breast milk. Um, if you research it, breast milk has the perfect balance of nutrients. Um, it's easier to digest for baby's tummy um, so they don't get constipated. Actually, my um, pediatrician said that it's basically impossible for a breastfed baby to get constipated. Um, also, they absorb their nutrients better if you're giving them breast milk instead of passing them out. Um, research says that the babies that are breastfed have fewer infections and fewer hospitalizations. So that's an interesting fact. Um, breast milk is full of antibodies which transfer from mom to baby. So that helps strengthen their immune system, lowers chances of ear infections and other sicknesses and things. So if you can breastfeed for at least six months, the first six months, that really is the best thing. Um, even if you have to pump and put it in bottles, that's um, basically a big pain, but that's what we're doing um, because Ellie um, needs, she can only latch onto the bottle. Um, so we pump and we just do that. We take pump with us everywhere and so that we make sure that she's always getting breast milk. So we're doing the very best we can. Number seven is probiotics. Now, uh, many people aren't familiar with what, probi what probiotics are, 
Um, but uh, this is a probiotic in a dropper form. So um, it's kind of like the opposite of uh, antibiotic. So this has little live things that are good that fight infections and things. So babies with brain abnormalities are more prone to sickness. Uh, so you might want to consider getting involved with probiotics with your baby's diet. Um, you can uh, use a dropper and put it in their mouth. So uh, this does help the development of good bacteria. And this one's actually for infants. So. Yeah, so that's important. You want to make sure that you get one that's for infants. Uh, but this helps the development of the good bacteria that remains in the gut. It's the same with grown-ups if you buy a probiotic. Uh, not, not necessarily like uh, getting yogurt or something because that has hardly anything in it. You know, you'd have to actually buy a probiotic pill or something like that for a grown-up. For babies, it's different. Uh, so you do just administer this in their mouth and stuff. Uh, but that keeps these good things in their gut. Uh, it promotes healthy digestion also for better nutrient uh, absorption. Um, the immune system is in the gut, so this helps your baby have a healthier immune system. So we use Culturel Baby plus vitamin D, and um, uh, we get it on Amazon for about $18, um, which is cheaper. They have the same thing in Walmart, but it actually costs a lot more there. Um, so we get um, one little dropper is good for a one month supply. So you just put the drops directly on their tongue one at a time and it tastes real good. So we've never had any problem with Ellie taking it. Number six is stay home when flu season peaks. This is December through February. That would mean no church or social gatherings. You know how people around you are always coughing and sneezing and stuff, so you don't want your special needs baby to be exposed to these germs um, because you, you're the one who has to watch out for these things and defend your baby. The other people won't. They're just going to go out and get everybody else sick. So don't let anyone come over who has allergy-like symptoms. Mm -hmm. They say they have allergies. Maybe they do, but maybe they have the flu and they really just don't want to stay home. So uh, this means lots of hand washing and hand sanitizer around the house. Uh, other family members wear masks when sick. We have to do that. Um, and we also have friends who also do this with their babies as well. Uh, so sometimes they exclude themselves and they'll all stay in a room if they're sick and won't come around the baby even, you know. We don't want the baby to get a flu, which we know uh, the flu typically kills children, babies, and old people. So um, we don't need this to be happening with our babies, right? Uh, we, we want to clean doorknobs, light switches, periodically, especially when someone is sick, okay? So that we're being uh, offensive when flu season is around, not just defensive, but we're also, we're also being defensive, but offensive also. Number five, go-to cola extract drops. Uh, the facts that we got on this are based off of Dr. Vikram Chauhan's uh, recommendations and information that he has. Uh, uh, Goto Cola has a cooling effect on the brain. It also increase, increases the circulation in the brain uh, and improves brain function. It improves uh, long-term memory and retention, supports focus, concentration, balances the left and right hemispheres, yeah, there's many benefits to go to cola um, that we've learned about, and so for babies with special needs, um, it's really a good idea to be giving them something extra to boost their brain. Um, so we buy Hawaii Farm go to cola with a non-alcohol base. We give a couple drops a couple times a day. Um, we've kind of just figured this out for ourselves, so you'll have to figure out what's right for you. Um, but we mix it in a bottle with her breast milk because it tastes gross and she will gag otherwise. But if you just mix, mix a couple drops in with um, a bottle of breast milk, then they can't taste it at all. So no problem at all. So you can get a large bottle. This is a two ounce large bottle um, that we get on Amazon for about $20. And it lasts a long time. It probably lasts you six months to a year because it, literally it will last you that long. We've had this one for a very long time. So we recommend that you try Go To Cola. Number four, Bacopa Monnieri extract drops. The information that we have about this is also based on Dr. Vikram Chauhan's information. Uh, this is similar to go to cola. Uh, however, this creates a warming effect on the brain, which he says is not bad. Uh, this repairs neurons in the brain that are damaged 
it improves brain function, improves neuron communication, and it also protects the brain from harmful chemicals that are responsible for neurological diseases linked to cognition and memory. Yeah, so this is huge for babies that have um, brain disorders, like Ellie does. Um, this um, also helps brains to um, grasp things better, so it helps with cognition, and it helps improve memory also, just like the go-to cola. Um, so, but it should be noted that when you're taking this, you are not supposed to take any metal supplements like zinc or magnesium, things like that. Um, we buy Heavenly Herbals brand, and we just give a couple drops a couple times a day, just like with the go-to cola. Um, we put it in the milk, um, with the breast milk in the bottle. Um, it doesn't have a taste though, we just put it in there with her other medicines, so it's just easy to administer. You can get a 1.83 fluid um, ounce bottle like this on Amazon for about $20, and it also lasts a very long time, six months to a year, you'd be good to go for 20 bucks. So both uh, Go-To Cola and uh, Bacopa Monieri are anti-stress, anti-anxiety, and they have uh, many more benefits. Uh, I found out about it because college students use it for studying. It helps focus. Um, so, and then I take the, I also take the go-to cola for uh, memory and cognition. So, uh, these are both yeah, Ayurvedic. He, take, he takes it himself also. Yeah, I take, these, the I take both these also. The so, um, both of these are Ayurvedic herbs, which means that they are from India. It's a weird word, Ayurvedic, but that's what it's from. So, um, both are sometimes referred to as Brahmi. When you're shopping around for it, you're going to see Brahmi. That's a very general term, so watch out. Make sure that you see something that specifies whether it is Bacopa or Go-To Cola. All right, number three is no vaccines. This is obviously a very controversial topic. Um, but we've done lots of research and um, even on the CDC website, it admits that there are severe complications to vaccines that are possible. Um, the CDC calls seizures as a side effect a moderate reaction. I wouldn't call it moderate myself. Um, I think that's pretty serious. The CDC lists possible serious side effects to some of their vaccines as long-lasting seizures, a coma, lowered consciousness, brain damage, and of course death. All of these things are possible serious side effects that they, um, they readily admit. And so when you get your child vaccinated, you're really taking a chance, um, you know, that they could get messed up pretty severely. And uh, so for these special needs kids, they already have a brain condition. And so when you add on something like this potentially very hazardous um, to their mind and their body, um, then that can be very serious for a special needs baby. And once you start having seizures, a lot of times they, you generally need anti-seizure meds um, to stop them, which uh, those medicines, um, you know, pharmaceuticals have their own serious side effects associated with them. So. We do know people that have started using CBD oil when their child did have um, seizures uh, so that they didn't get stuck on the seizure meds uh, also. But it's not a coincidence uh, if your special needs kid gets vaccinated and then starts having seizures. Uh, this is why the uh, vaccine injury compensation program was started in 1988. Um, it was started because so many people were suing the government that uh, the government had to start putting funds aside for all of those lawsuits. Mm -hmm. um, vaccine injury claims have reached a decade high uh, in 2017, which is 11 percent more than the previous year. Mm. Uh, you can visit vactruth.com and look at article, uh, an article that's called Eight Reasons Why Your Child's Doctor Pushes Vaccines. Uh, doctors do get um, incentives to keep kids fully vaccinated. It's a fact. Um, so, you know, when it's an insurance thing and, and doctors are making money off of it, it's just you want to protect your family first and question things mm -hmm. that are um, causing problems with so many other children. You don't want to be part of that statistic, you know, you want to protect your child and we, and we want to protect your child too. So that's why we're giving you this information. Uh, you can also watch a documentary that's called Vaxxed. Uh, it shows a bunch of kids in that video, a lot of testimonies of families who uh, the kids received vaccinations and then they were handicapped afterwards. Uh, so you, you, you might want to check that out as well. Number two on our list is CBD oil. Um, this treats anxiety. It doesn't have any THC in it, so you don't have to worry about that if that's a concern. 
um, but it really helps with special needs kids when they have freak outs. Um, so Ellie used to have some really bad ones um, where she would scream for a couple hours. Most of the time it was be because she was um, overtired or something like that. Um, but she would just be inconsolable. I would bounce her, rock her, try to feed her, and she would just choke because she wouldn't even take her bottle. She'd just be inconsolable and unreasonable for like two, three hours until she finally passed out um, asleep. And um, so when we started using this CBD oil, it just takes the edge off and relaxes her so that she is able to um, go to sleep. Sometimes she goes to sleep, but sometimes it just calms her down so she's able to be reasonable, basically. So um, we use the Charlotte's Web name brand of CBD hemp oil extract. Uh, we did a lot of research. Uh, lots of people out there were saying this was the best one. And the main reason we started using this one is because it doesn't have any added natural flavors. Natural flavors means that they are chemicals to produce a natural flavor that isn't the actual thing. Like chocolate, you'll see a lot of chocolate flavored ones. It's not actual chocolate in there. It's a natural flavor. So um, because our baby's brain, Ellie's brain is so sensitive, uh, we don't want these things going into her. You know, we don't want anything extra. We want natural stuff going through. So uh, the way that we give it to her is we give her three drops straight in the mouth. And uh, if we give her more than that, it just makes her too sleepy. So, you know, every child is different. So when you get it, start off small and increase the dosage as necessary. You'll see what your kid's doing and, and you, nobody knows your kid better than you do. The number one early intervention step for a special needs child is prayer. Pray, pray, pray for your child. Uh, the Lord hears and answers prayers. Um, the Lord cares about you. He cares about your child, mm -hmm. and He wants to be your strength during this time. Uh, it's very hard for a parent to go through taking care of a special needs child. Um, the Lord does not expect you to do this on your own, but He wants you to rely on His strength, not your own. So don't fail in this. Pray to the Lord. He loves you, and He's listening at all times. That's right, and we also have a video coming up that we'll be doing soon about Ellie's brain healing um, that happened directly from prayer. Um, that's a, gonna be a big one that's coming out. Um, so really, if you can contact prayer chains at your church or family members or friends, anybody that you know, um, get them praying for your child's health. Obviously, it's not like a guarantee that your kid's gonna be miraculously healed, but we really wanna be seeking the Lord's will and turning to Him. Um, so that we can just um, have the right focus um, when we're, you know, special needs parenting. Because the Lord made these kids and he made them special. So we want to be seeking his will. All right, so those are the 10 things um, that you can do to really help your baby get the best start. I'm sure that there's a lot more things you could add to this. Maybe you'll want to take some things away from this and other things you just won't be right for your child. So you have to do whatever's right for your child in particular. Um, for Ellie, we've implemented these 10 steps for her. She's happy, healthy. Uh, she hasn't been sick once yet. She's sleeping now. Uh, she's been asleep for most of this video. Uh, but uh, she hasn't had any seizures. Uh, she's alert. She's learning sign language. She laughs, squeals, and smiles. She interacts with us very well. She knows our voices. Um, she does a lot of things that are just like a perfectly normal baby, except we're getting used to the blind thing with, with Ellie, so. Right. We don't know how far this she'll go, obviously, but we want to make sure that we give her the best start possible. If you found this video helpful, please click the button below and subscribe to our channel. We're going to have lots of other videos coming your way for parents of uh, babies with blindness and brain disorders. And they're all going to be starring Ellie!